much the same is happening with the media coverage of Kamala Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walz, who's been caught out falsely claiming he went to a war zone with the National Guard. In fact, he, he quit as soon as he heard that uh, they were going to be deployed to Iraq. <laughs> he quit. Uh, and that he reached the rank of Command Sergeant Major before he retired. Now, both claims are false. He never made uh, Command Sergeant Major. He didn't pass any of the exams. But now this guy is saying people shouldn't denigrate military service. Right. Now, it seems well, to me most of the media is giving this guy a pass for lying. And that's the thing. The way that you just framed it is exactly the point. There's a difference between attacking someone's service, which nobody has done. He served 24 years honorably. He should be thanked for his service to the country. But as you pointed out, there's at least three issues. Number one, uh, he said and alluded to the fact that he went to Afghanistan. He served as part of OEF, Operation Enduring Freedom. And when he allowed people to ascribe to him the status of having gone to war to Afghanistan, that's a lie. Number two, he personally said multiple times that he used weapons of war. He's never done that. He never served in a war zone, never went forward. Again, his service is one thing, but lying about and trying to pretend that he actually went forward as a combat is something that, that people have killed themselves for. I don't mean to be dramatic, but Admiral Borda, a, for a future Navy, a, excuse me, a previous Navy leader, was killed himself because there were claims that he was using the V, the valor, in one of his awards, and he hadn't actually earned it. I mean, that's how serious this stuff's taken. He used the rank of command sergeant major, not just sergeant major, command sergeant major. And to your point, there were two issues with that. One, he was what we call frocked in the military, right? So he was given the rank, but said, now you have to earn it. One, by attending the command sergeant major school, and two, by time and grade. So when you get promoted in the military here in the U.S., it's generally three years in grade before you get to earn that, that rank. He didn't do either. And he went over and over again on his bio and said that he had he was had attained that rank. He didn't. He didn't retire at that rank. And he has used the command sergeant major retired in his title over and over again. Now, here's the thing. If these were just baseless attacks, I would say two things. One, why did the Harris campaign correct both of them? It, quote, updated his bio on their website and said he attained the rank of command sergeant major. He didn't retire at it. And secondly, it said he misspoke when he said that he used weapons of war, right? It's not us attacking him. He's the one who corrected it. Now, in, in our military, if somebody claims to be a Navy SEAL and didn't actually go to BUDS, then that's a lie. There is a big, big difference between denigrating somebody's service and someone who has served trying to ascribe themselves to attributes or to feats that they didn't achieve. And that's a big difference. And that's the thing about how you phrased it. He lied about his record. And, and what they're trying to do with the media's help, mind you, is say, oh, you're attacking his service. Well, it's the same media way, by the way, in the United States that has gone after countless politicians for wearing insignia that wasn't earned, maybe a warfare print, or using a rank that wasn't earned, or someone who previously claimed or alluded to the fact that they had gone to war. It's just, when it comes to Tim Waltz, apparently, hands off. And uh, Kamala Harris, both of them, it's just unbelievable. Uh, they're walking through the fires with some sort of mystical uh, protection all around them, thanks to the media. I mean, it's just absolutely bizarre what I'm seeing. But... Just to finish up there, Sean, uh, unfortunately for the Republicans, it seems to be working in the polls. Or have I got that wrong? Because I did see uh, the pollster Frank Luntz point out that in his polling, he'd never seen so much Republican uh, support from uh, union members for Donald Trump. And yet the poll suggests that Kamala Harris is ahead in now a number of swing states that she needs to win to become president. Well, here's what I'd say, because there's clearly there's several polls. We just had one of the big uh, accurate pollsters, I would say, uh, Robert Cahaley from the Trafalgar Group on my podcast. There are definitely there's no question that the race has tightened. Like once you get rid of Joe Biden, they were willing to take a doorknob, to be honest with you. It was anybody but Biden they were happy with. Remember, this woman, Kamala Harris, 
was rated the most unpopular vice president in U.S. history 30 days ago. Suddenly, it's she's the most popular person. It's not a question of them loving her. I think it was just anybody but Biden is what it came down to. That being said, I mean, look, the, the polls have tightened, and I think that the Trump campaign has to do two things. Number one, focus on the issues and policies. The name calling, and I think I've said this to you before, is like yelling at the referees in the middle of a game. It's not going to change the outcome. Play the game. The score at the end is all that matters. And the Trump record beats her record every day of the week. His policies are more popular. His record is better. And that's what they should focus on, because those key voters in those key battleground states, that's what they focus on, right? So he's got to stay focused on that. And number two, this is all going to come down to ground game. Who can get their voters out in those key swing states once early voting starts and bank those votes, right? That's what it counts on. A poll tells you real quickly a snapshot of where the electorate is. But then you got to get your voters out. You've got to get them to cast an early or an absentee ballot or on election day, go, go stand in line and vote. A poll doesn't dictate that you're going to win. It just tells you, you know, who, how much support you have. Then you've got to actually, almost like a product and a consumer, you got to go get the person to buy your product now. They, you know they like it. You know they like it better than your competition. But now you got to get them to spend money, maybe go to the grocery store or whatever and actually purchase it. That's what you have to do in politics. You have to get that consumer out, make them cast that vote for you. Well, I don't know. Uh, the enthusiasm for Kamala Harris, I wonder whether it's a media creation or real uh, because that will be critical to getting out the vote. Uh, we shall see. Uh, it's still you know, several months to go. It all lies into whether it's fake or real, this enthusiasm for yeah. Kamala Harris. Thank you so much for your time, Sean Spicer. As always, Andrew, thank you.